what's goody what's up winners welcome back to the winner circle y'all today's video y'all is gonna be a little bit spicy a little bit juicy you know what i'm saying i'm gonna give you um i think it's six yes i'm gonna give you six subtle behaviors that people do when they're envious and they're jealous of you okay and they're pretty subtle they're not that out loud okay um if you're new here do whatever you got to do to become part of the winner's circle whatever platform you're watching this on like follow subscribe do whatever you got to do to become part of the winner's circle if you've been rocking with me for a while y'all already know i love y'all so much you guys are just my entire heart but let's get into it okay here is six subtle behaviors that people do when they're jealous or envious of you and the first one is they can never agree with you they yeah they they will they will never take your side and when i say it's subtle it's subtle because it always comes off as um just a a, a difference in opinion a preference um just just a, a different way of, of thinking it comes off that way it comes off that way but if you have a keen eye to it you're gonna pick up on these behaviors you're gonna be like yeah um and i mean this is more this is more than one time occasion this is a reoccurring situation this is a reoccurring event for you where this person is always in opposition of you and you be like why well, seem like it's me against the world why no it's it's, it's them against Mr. or Mrs. Perfect because that's how they're looking at you. They think, oh, this person think they're perfect. Da, 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 da. That's how they're feeling about you. So they have to do whatever they can, be in opposition with you to try to, to, to stun on you, to try to dim your light, to try to put a cap on you. If you are always um, in any kind of communion with someone, any kind of interactions with somebody, and most of the time they're in opposition of you, they jealous of you. They low key envious of you. They hate no you. I'm gonna tell you like it is. Ain't no sugarcoating it. If you find that this person is 80%, 90% always in opposition of what you think, what you're saying, what you got going on, that person is jealous of you. Period. Point blank. There is no um, there is no trying to reason with it. And let me give you some examples, okay? Um, it might look something like let's let's say a coworker or something. Let, 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 let's use coworkers because coworkers, oh, they got it bad, boy. Let me know in the comment section if you if your coworkers they got it bad, they be jealous, boy. Them coworkers is messy, messy boots, ain't they? But let's use a coworker for example, okay? So let's say um, you know you guys are having a conversation. It's you, a coworker, and the jealous coworker, and you talking to the other coworker, and you, you guys are just having a discussion, and they're like, you know, you're like, oh, I like I like green mostly, and that person's gonna be like, no, I like blue. Um, the, the, the other coworker that you're talking to, they might um, say, well, I prefer to do things, da 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 And that jealous coworker, they're always going to side with the other coworker. They're never going to side with you. Even They might not even really, they might not even really um, think the same way as that other coworker. They're just making sure that they're in opposition of you. Or you might, um, let's say y'all have a business meeting or something and that person comes in and, and you're like, oh, I saved a seat for you. And they're like, actually, I don't want to sit there. I'm going to sit over here. No, actually, or I know this is your favorite seat, so I saved it for you you oh i don't want to sit there today i actually i'm actually gonna go sit over here you might say that you um that you like you like um skateboarding and you know for a fact that they like skateboarding because on their social media they have all skateboarding but that day when you're talking they're like no i don't like skateboarding like my family just forces me to do it i i don't like it <laughs> and i mean these are weird examples i don't know if y'all can understand what i'm saying but if you have somebody who was always in opposition of you all the time all the time it doesn't matter what you say, what you're talking about. If you're talking about something big, talking about something small, talking about a piece, a, a food, a color, it could it, you could be talking about something so stupid. They are always in opposition of you. They're jealous of you. They're envious of you. And what they're doing it because it gives them leverage to try to shit on you so to speak it gives them that leverage it makes people who are jealous and they move, operate like that and they move in funny ways it they 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 think they think about weird things to do to 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 make you feel less than it'd it be so weird they they concoct these little these little things inside their head these little schemes these little these little swindling moves inside their head to, to make you feel like like you less than to make you feel crushed on to make you feel like uh to make you feel smaller than what you really are whole time you don't give a damn if you're part of the winter circle you bet not care <laughs> but these are this is a subtle behavior to know if someone is jealous of you or envious of you if they are always in opposition of you don't matter what's going on this person is always in opposition of you and you'd be feeling like hey like this person is always low-key kind of combative with me they jealous of you, okay? Jealous of you, okay? Um, and sometimes because things can be so subtle, we try to we be giving people the benefit of the doubt. Well, listen, I'm here to tell you today: stop giving people the benefit of the doubt. 
and I don't mean to sound cold or crucial, you know, crucial when I say that, is especially at this age, we grown. People know what they're doing. They know when they screw you over. They know when they throw in shade. They know when they hating on you. They know when they talk in mess on, on a low key way. They know what they're doing to you. Stop giving people the benefit of the doubt. The less you give people the benefit of the doubt, the less you'll have problems with people screwing you over. I promise you that. Stop giving people the benefit of the doubt. People too grown to not know what they're doing to you. People too grown to not know how they're treating you. Stop giving people the benefit of the doubt. You got one time to mess me over and that's it. Like, I, I just be like, nah. Unless I really, 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 really love you. Now, if you know somebody really, really love you and maybe it's just a miscommunication, a misunderstanding, that's different. You can give somebody the benefit of the doubt. You got to judge them at their core. But if at their core, you know, they messy, stop giving people the benefit of the doubt. Move along, okay? Run along, move along from them, okay? So the second sign, y'all, the second behavior, the second behavior people do, subtle. Remember, the, these things are subtle. The second subtle behavior things that people do when they jealous or envious of you is um, micro expressions. And micro expressions happen quickly. So you got to have an eye for it. You got to be keen to it. You got to pay attention. And let's say you walk into a building, okay? You walk into a building and it, it could be um, a business meeting at work. You know, y'all having um, staff meetings or something. It could be a baby shower. It could be um, a birthday party party, a function, a family reunion, any place that you walk into and you know that there's going to be a massive amount of people that you know, or a, a group full of people, a handful of people that you know. When you walk into that building, as soon as you walk in, scan the building, pay attention, scan the environment. And those subtle, those uh, micro expressions is if you walk into a building and you see somebody roll their eyes when you walk in, that's a micro expression. It's, it, it happens unconsciously because your face it tells, it tells everything about who you are and how your heart feels. Your face cannot hide how your heart feels. I don't care how, how much you try to try it. Your face always, always, always will tell you how your heart feels. So they might not even know that they roll in their eyes when you walk in the building. Or they might not see you catch it. Like, oh, I did that. I didn't realize I did that. But if you walk into a building somewhere and you see somebody... Real quick, these happen, it, it, I mean, it happens within seconds because it's the initial feeling about you. And then they fall in line with their fakeness. Then the mask comes on. The mask comes on pretty much right away. But that natural emotion, that natural expression, that um, that natural uh, uh, gesture of how they first see you, when they first see you, what they naturally do, that's how they feel about you. If you see somebody kind of just, or a sigh, like... <sighs> When you first walk into a building, when they first see you, you first lock eyes on them. Or if somebody, if you're approaching somebody and they're behind, you're, you're behind them walking up to them and they turn around real quickly and you see it kind of, and then they smile like, first they go, and then they smile. They don't like you. There's jealousy and there's envy there. It's those micro expressions, you guys. Micro expressions will give anybody away on how they genuinely feel about you because they do it unconsciously. It's almost muscle memory. It's how the heart feels and you can't hide how the heart feels. It doesn't matter what you try to say, what kind of facade you put on. It doesn't matter um, what kind of show you try to put on. It don't, it, it don't matter. When you don't like somebody, are you jealous of somebody, you envious of somebody, you feel any kind of negative emotions towards somebody, it's going to show the moment you see them but it's a it's it's very quick it's very quick that's all i like to call them micro expressions it's very very quick it's very quick and if you don't have an eye for it or if you're not aware of this you might not um you might think you tripping you might um just let them explain their way out of it like like are, you might ask them like are you okay um i walked up to you and you was kind of like like you was having a bad day and they're like oh no I didn't even realize I did that or they might lie they probably know they did it and they might be like like, like yeah girl like I was just uh, thinking about something da, da, da. they're lying initially when you see somebody if their initial reaction I'm talking quick I'm talking about that quick instant reaction before they get a chance to think about it it's it's muscle memory okay before they get a chance to think about it if that those micro expressions if it's a negativity towards you i'm talking quick y'all if it's negative towards you yeah they got a little bit of jealousy they got a little bit of envy inside them okay they really do okay they really do but the more you start calling it out the more they're gonna check themselves. <laughs> start start putting people on blast i like to put people on blast with their behavior put them on blast like oh you having a bad day what's going on with you because when i walked up you was looking kind of funny <laughs> what's going on when i walked up you was looking kind of uh hot and bothered you was kind of puzzled like 
Like I disturbed your, your demons. I disturbed your being. Listen, <laughs> there is some jealousy or some envy going on. Pay attention to those micro expressions when you surprise someone and they don't know you coming. Or when you first walk into a building or you, um, abruptly reach someone and they didn't know they didn't expect you to arrive at that time they expected you to arrive late at a later time or something those micro expressions will give away every single time of how somebody feels about you okay moving on the uh, oh this one is uh similar to the second one so the third one is um they roll their eyes and they get frustrated when you're being praised um, it could be in a work environment. It could be with other friends in a group setting. It could be um, um, with your neighbors. When someone is praising you, it could be for the work that you do. It could be for the content that you create. It could be for the hobbies that you have. It could be for the, the style of parenting that you that you have. Um, it, if you ever see somebody rolling their eyes or getting flustered, when you're getting praised, when you're getting um, accomplishments, when you're getting um, just being adored and they, they either change the subject, they roll their eyes, they act like they got to go all of a sudden, that person is a little bit jealous of you. They have envy inside of them and it is burnt. It's like nails on a chalkboard. It is burning them inside to hear you keep getting praise. Because again, it's them against Mr. or Mrs. Perfect. That's how they feel about you. They're looking at you like, you Mrs. Perfect. You're Mr. Perfect. And they can't stand it. They, it, it, it bothers them, okay? It, it is literally like screeching nails on the chalkboard when they hear you getting praised. So if people are giving you compliments, praising you on something that you do well, something that or something that you did well, maybe you handled the situation well, it could be anything, the way that you do your hair, it could be anything. Anytime you're getting praised or you're, you're getting accomplishments and that person is like, they turn up their nose at you. They roll their eyes. They, they, <coughs> they all of a sudden they sick. They cough it. <coughs> they, <laughs> they gotta go all of a sudden. But everybody was about to hang out. Th that's jealousy. They cannot. It's getting hot in the kitchen, baby, and they can't handle it. It's getting hot in the kitchen. They cannot handle it. They cannot handle any more uplifting of you. You are, they looking at you like you already on cloud 10. You already on a pedestal. They cannot handle you being uplifted anymore. It's going to break their neck to have to keep looking up at you. They, they already breaking their neck looking up at you because you're so elevated. You're part of the winner circle. You elevated. Com comment that in the comment section. Say I'm elevated. Affirm it, y'all. Affirm it, okay? When you when I tell y'all to comment stuff in the, in the comment section, it's not just because I want you to comment. It's because you're speaking, you're putting it out there. Speak it into existence existence manifested you elevated you a winner okay you getting betterer and betterer and betterer elevate uh, or acknowledge that okay you guys you getting better and better affirm that in the comment section okay manifest it okay we manifesting it together all of us are getting better and better and better okay but you you just so much better than they are they cannot they can't they can't afford to look up to you anymore they're gonna break their neck have them break it next then oh well it ain't your problem and if they want better, they need to do better for themselves. Okay, but that is a huge red flag that somebody got jealousy or envy of you with that little subtle behavior. Subtle behavior, just getting mad because you getting praised. All of us, they itching their neck and stuff. They uh, uh, now they got now they got to make a oh I gotta go over here and make a quick phone call because they cannot tolerate they can't handle you being praised in front of them anymore because you already just the golden child. <laughs> But that's a huge uh, behavior right there. That somebody don't really rock with you like that. That somebody got some jealousy or some envious and envy inside of them about you when they start rolling their eyes when you getting praised. They start making uh, sudden moves and stuff while you getting praised. They just can't handle it. Yeah, get rid of them. Uh, the fourth one, the fourth sign. The fourth behavior, subtle behavior that happens when people don't really rock with you like that. People got jealousy inside of them. People got envious and envy inside of them about you is especially on the workplace. So I'm gonna give you a scenario workplace and with family members and friends. OK, so they, they try to get you in trouble. This happens so bad in the workplace, y'all. You ever have a coworker who always trying to get you in trouble? They always run and telling that. They always snitching. They always complaining about something that you got going on. Always trying to make a scene to where you got to be hovered over by your supervisor, by your boss, by your to where somebody always got to check in to see if everything is okay with you because they over here snitching, running, telling that I'm gonna write a letter, being a Karen. You know what I'm saying? They always being a Karen over something that you're doing because you self sufficient. You come to work, you don't need nobody. 
to tell you what to do. You already know what to do. You know how to do it. You don't want nobody hovering over you. You're going to get the job done without being hovering. As a matter of fact, you're going to do it better when somebody's not hovering over you. And your supervisors, your bosses, your other coworkers know that. And they can't stand that because let's be real. There are some people in this world who are bosses, who are leaders, and they take initiative. And then there's other people in this world who are doers. They need somebody to tell them what to do. They need somebody to lead them. They need somebody to guide them and hold their hand and say, do this. Okay, now step two. And, 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 and that's okay. But people who are, who do need to be, to be shown how to do everything, they get jealous of people who are, who are the leaders and who, who got that leadership quality up in them. And, and they don't, they don't, they, they're initiative takers. They don't need somebody to tell them what to do. They get jealous of that. They they get envy, envious builds up side, envy builds inside of them for that, for, for that very reason. And they don't want to see you thriving like that. So what they doing, they wreaking havoc. They're like a little Tasmanian devil spinning circles, spinning uh, tornadoes around themselves, trying to get you in trouble, trying to get you in trouble, trying to, trying to crap on you, trying to um, dim your light, trying to, trying to paint you in a bad light, trying to put you in a bad picture, hoping you get written up, hoping you, hoping um, things don't go your way. They trying to get you in trouble. They don't like that. They don't like that you at work and you just outshining. You probably outshining the supervisor. They don't like that. And you probably even experienced supervisors hating on you. It don't matter who it is. People's job titles don't hold no more weight than your character. Huh? Let me say that one more time. People's job titles do not hold more weight than your character. There will be bosses, managers, coworkers who get mad at you because your character hold more weight than their title. And you would just be like, how are you jealous of me when you like you like 10 pay, pay grades above me. It's because your character hold more weight than a little raggedy title. They title cannot stand on what your character is on. Your character standing on business and they, and they title don't hold nothing. It don't hold nothing in comparison to who you are, how you operate, how you move in, the love that you have, the attraction that you have, how you glide through life is because you operate not of um, genuinity. Uh, you operate not of a uh, sound judgment and, and a good heart. So they 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 title doesn't hold no weight compa in comparison to your character. Messy coworkers who are trying to get you in trouble at work, yeah, they jealous of you. They envious of you because. Think about it like this. If somebody wasn't jealous of you, somebody wasn't hating on you, why would they be, they be working overtime to try to get you in trouble? Why? Because they hating on you. They want you out of there because you're taking all this shine. They want you out of there. But 10 times out of 10, if you're a part of the wonder circle, you're supposed to be out of there anyway, operating your gifts, operating your purpose. And she's going to keep having these problems. But anyway, that's another topic. That's another video. Book a session with me if you uh feeling like you, you've you been called to quit your job. If you feel like you've been called to operate in your gifts, book a session with me. I will boss you up and help you operate in your gifts, your calling, anything that you need, okay? Uh, the link is going to be in the top of the comment section. But um, what friends and family members friends and family members that if you know they they start problems with you they start um get trying to get you in trouble your family members okay let, let, let's piggyback off the family members you ever had a family member who always seemed like they just being messy they gossiping about you spreading uh rumors to the rest of the family about you spreading lies or there might be some kind of interaction and they just blow it out of proportion put dubs on it you be like that didn't even happen like that. Like, yeah, me and her had words or whatever, but it didn't happen like that. It didn't, it didn't stem from that. Da, 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 da. Whatever the case may be, this family member is always causing drama between the within the family dynamic to paint you in a bad light. They jealous, baby. They jealous. They envious of you. If you got a family member working over time to try to get you in trouble with other family members, to try to make you fall out with other family members. They jealous. That's all. They jealous. They envious. And at the end of the day, feel bad for them because if they could spend all, their entire life just worried about you, they not living life. Mm, excuse me. Excuse me, y'all. I just had lunch. I had a, uh, ooh, it was so good, y'all. I made a BLT um, with avocado and ranch on it. It was bacon, lettuce, tomato, avocado, and a drizzle of ranch. It was so good. It was so hearty. But anyways, um, if you got a family member working overtime, they jealous of you. If no matter, you probably don't even do nothing to them, but they always got your name in their mouth. <laughs> they jealous of you. They envious of you, okay? Don't pay these people no mind. But they, the people who are always trying to get you in trouble, always trying to swindle behind the scenes to, to make people not like you and fall out with you, yeah. 
that that's jealousy and envy for real and i don't know if that behavior is subtle it's more subtle in the work environment some people think it's subtle with family members because here again y'all be giving people the benefit of the doubt uh-uh stop doing that um with friends let me tell you how i look like with friends with friends when they trying to get you in trouble with other people it might be a group of y'all let's say it's a group of you know more than three more than five people it's a group of y'all friends and y'all always hang out y'all always going outings together if you got one friend who's always causing problems between you and another friend it, it, it this part this one is subtle because it looked like they be playing both sides like they might drop a dime over here in this person's ear and then go back over here and drop a dime over here next thing you know two two friends is arguing and that one that one common denominator they look like they're not in the mix but they the only motherfucker going back and forth Playing both sides. They're the only one spreading little lies. They're the only one. Well, she said this. Well, she said that. Well, she feel this way. Well, she feel that way. Sometimes they put the mask on like they be a mediator. Sometimes they put the mask on like they just trying to trying to to, to smooth it out. The one who trying to smooth it out between y'all typically is the one who started it. Is the one who opened up their mouth and started running their mouth. And they, they painted they they paint a picture like they, I was just trying to help. I was just telling so and so how you felt. I was just because you didn't want them to tell them how they felt, so I just told them how you felt, and that way y'all could hash it out and get it all out. Uh, uh they being messy and they starting stuff. If you got a friend who's always starting stuff between you and another friend, and you might not until this video, you might not have thought that they started it until this video. But if that if that person is the common denominator, dom, the common denominator. The common denominator. <laughs> if that, if you got a person who is the common denominator, always trying to be mediator and smooth things out, and oh, I, you know, we could just hash things out, you guys. We could just meet up and talk it out. I guarantee you, that's the person starting it, painting a picture as if they just trying to help. They start it. They're they're a liar. They start it. Listen, it's going to be people. It's going to be friends that you have that may not like each other. It's going to be coworkers that you have that you cool with both of them that might not like each other. It is very important, number one, that you don't um, take sides, okay? the wor Especially as a life coach, y'all. The worst thing that I hear is, uh, especially from women, um, that's that's my friend and, and she don't like who I don't like. If you don't like my friend, I, I, I don't like you. Listen, when you grown, you do not inherit people's drama. I'm going to say that one more time. When you're grown, when you're an adult, when you are elevated, when you are mature, you do not inherit people's drama. Do not inherit people's enemies. Now you got enemies and drama just because Keisha got enemies and drama and you and Keisha cool. <laughs> absolutely not it is the most toxic most dumbest most lamest most immature thing i ever heard in my life there has been people who who you know try to pull me into that well so i don't like her so you my friend so you can't like her excuse me i'm a grown-ass woman don't tell me who to like don't tell me who not to talk to as a matter of fact i don't like neither one of y'all because y'all too drama filled that's a red flag okay and a lot of people especially you know coming up as children into into high school and then getting into adulthood we have that mentality for, especially with friends that we've been growing up with so long oh i don't like you because you don't like my friend oh, oh um this is my bestie and my bestie don't like you so you automatically my enemy it is the lowest vibration you could ever emit okay inheriting people's drama inheriting people's enemies absolutely not Ab absolutely not let me let me ask you this while you inheriting keisha's drama and keisha's um her enemies would you be able to inherit her um her savings account as well would you be able to inherit her lottery winnings if she won would you be able to inherit her um her um let's say if she came up on some some life-changing money from from a deed or a will would you be able to inherit that inherit that as well ask yourself because that's real talk you're not inheriting the things that uplift you and benefit you, but you're inheriting the things that break you down and keep you low. Uh-uh. We're not inheriting people's drama. We are not inheriting people's enemies. Stop that and stop it now. It is disgusting behavior. Don't never let somebody tell you who you can and cannot be friends with. Now, you could be neutral or you could just not rock with nobody at all. That's cool. Um, there has been a time or two where I had coworkers, um, uh, I won't say their real names. I'll just say Sarah and Becky. <laughs> Sarah don't like Becky and Becky don't like Sarah. And I'm new on the scene and they both love me. So, and I'm cool. Who am I to insert myself in some drama that happened that ain't got nothing to do with me? 
nothing to do with me. But I'm aware now that they don't like each other. Sarah and Becky don't like each other. So in order for me to save to save myself and to get and not get sucked in it, either I can say I don't, I'm not hanging out with neither one of y'all, or I can set boundaries. And what I chose to do was set boundaries because I loved both of them. I enjoyed Becky and Sarah. Who am I to not like neither one of these women over some drama that ain't got nothing to do with me? I don't inherit people's drama. I don't inherit people's enemies. So what I tell Becky is, when I'm with Becky, listen, when I'm with you, don't talk to me about Sarah because I will not be a sounding board for you to spill out on me of all the negative things that you feel about Sarah and then I'm gonna go sit in Sarah's face. Don't do that. Same thing goes for Sarah. Sarah, when I'm with you, don't talk to me about Becky because I'm her friend too. I will not be a sounding board for you to diss her, for you to bash her. Y'all keep that, that ain't got nothing to do with me. But it takes maturity to have that mindset. It takes maturity to be able to say that because most people, they want to hear the tea. They want to hear the scoop. They want to hear the drama. Check yourself. Check yourself, okay? And it's not to make nobody feel bad. It's to elevate you. It's to help you grow. We don't inherit drama. We don't inherit, inherit enemies, okay? And you stay neutral. And if you don't know how to stay neutral, because sometimes it takes, it takes um, practice. It takes awareness and self-discipline. Because sometimes we do want to hear the drama. We do want to hear the scoop. We do want to hear the tea. We do want to hear how people fell out sometimes because it's entertaining. We ain't going to lie. It's entertaining. So it takes that discipline. Nah, -uh. I'm not here for the scoop. I'm not here for the drama. I'm here to get paid. Okay. And I want to, I want to laugh at work. I want to smile, you know? So that's, that was my demeanor at work. Sarah, don't tell me nothing about Becky. Becky, don't tell me nothing about Sarah. We, there's so many more things in this world we could talk about other than y'all two hating each other. You got me messed up. I'm not here for that. And if you want to talk about uh, when Jessica get to work, that's who you talk to your tea with while you don't like so-and-so. Wait till that girl get here, but don't do it with me. Wait till that other little girl get here. Don't do it with me. And as a matter of fact, if you do start doing it, I'm going to call you out. And I, when I call people out, I like to say this. Uh, can I quote you on that? Because she about to walk through the door. So can I quote exactly what you said? And people looking at me like, that, don't, don't, don't do that. I don't want to hear nothing, no drama. I don't. <laughs> so check yourself okay check yourself it, check, make sure you are not inheriting people's drama people's enemies people's mindsets people's behaviors when it comes to negativity and not liking each other okay so if you find yourself around somebody who is starting mess starting mess between family members between co-workers between friends they don't like you they got envious in their heart they they are envious of you they are envious of you. So they are trying to recruit people. They are trying to start fires everywhere to get people not to like you, to get you in trouble, to get you um, under a bad light, to get people to look at, to view you differently. They don't like you. It's jealousy. It's jealousy. Okay. Mm, number five, y'all. Number five. Number five, you guys, when, and, and again, this could go for anybody, Fan, friends, family members, coworkers, it don't matter. But usually it happens with people who are close to you and they kind of know your intimate life. When people always talk about the old you, always talk about your screw ups, your shortcomings, your mess ups, your mistakes. Um, may, maybe sometimes you broke the law, you done something wrong, you got a ticket, you did a little bit of jail time, but you have elevated and they see that. They know that you've elevated, you've come, you've come extremely far, you have grown. If they always bringing up the old you, and you know for a fact that that is no longer you, that's like seven years ago, eight years ago, 10 years ago, they jealous of you. They jealous of your elevation. And I say this all the time, the more you elevate, the, lighter your, the brighter your light becomes. The brighter your light is, the more it sh sheds light on their lack of what they're not doing, what they're not accomplishing, where they're not growing at. So they, they cause messes, they, they, they start little fires, and they start talking about all the things that you used to do. All the things that you, 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 you used to do. Everything that, everything that goes against who you are today. They start talking about your old habits, your old patterns, your old um, addictions, your old mistakes, your old ways, your old way of thinking. If somebody is constantly bringing up the old you, and it's like, they never talk about your um, successes. They never talk about your accomplishments. They never talk about the things that you got going on. Yeah, they got some jealousy going on. Because it's like, why are you still living in my past? Why? Can you answer me that? Why are you living in my past? Why do you keep bringing up my past? That's that accusatory language inadvertently. Accusing you of everything that you do wrong 
inadvertently. Instead of saying, you did this, they telling everybody, oh, you know, she used to do da da da, da. Remember she, and it's subtle because they make it seem like it, oh, I'm just remembering, I'm just reminding them of what you did. I'm reminding them of what you said. Or, I remember you used to behave this way. No, stop living in my past. When people do that, check them, put them in their place right away. It, it don't have to be rude. You could just say something like, um, that's not who I am anymore. I'd appreciate it if you not, didn't bring that up anymore. That's not what I do anymore. I appreciate if you left that in the past. You ain't got to, you know what I'm saying, put them in a hell lock or nothing. We know you about that life. You ain't got to do all that. But if somebody is constantly bringing up the old you and constantly trying, especially in front of in front of other people in public, you know, you out there shining, you having a good time and here they come bringing up something you did in the past. What are you talking about? Why are you intentionally bringing up something negative that happened to me in the past in a moment where I'm having a great time? Jealousy, envy, for sure. <laughs> if you're part of the winner's circle, you probably, man, all these things probably, you probably experienced. These are six subtle behaviors that people do when they got jealousy in their heart for you, when they got envy in their heart for you, okay, you guys? Let me know what you thought about this video. I'll see you next time at the winner's circle.